Hey, welcome back to The Dive. Today on the show, we have the CEO and co-founder of Versus, Gabrielle Rene. He's going to teach us about the spatial web and how this technology is bridging the gap between the digital and the real world. He's also going to give us a company update on Versus from recent partnerships to a brand new lab. Hey, Gabe, welcome back to The Dive. Hey, Cassandra, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Okay, so let's start off with the big news. Versus just announced a partnership with Blue Yonder. For our audience, who is Blue Yonder? What do they do? Yeah, so Blue Yonder is the largest warehouse management software provider in the world. Um, I mean, they're just simply massive. They operate across 78 countries. They have over 3,000 global customers. Many of the, the largest retailers you know when you go to the mall use their system to manage their inventory in their back, back of house or in their distribution centers. And so the deal between Versus and Blue Yonder is essentially to enable Blue Yonder to have Versus AI-powered assisted routing capabilities, which is really kind of ways for warehouse workers helping you to use AI to guide them uh, through the warehouse more efficiently, more effectively, and then becoming our first major reseller of that capability, which we call Wayfinder, to their global uh, customer base. So it's a, it's a massive sort of uh, moment for us as a, as a company and a, I think a huge indicator of the sort of uh, adoption interest at really the largest scale. Amazing, congratulations. Thank you. Could you maybe break down a little bit more about how the deal works for Versus and why the partnership makes sense? Yeah, fundamentally, um, you know, when we were innovating the core capabilities off of our Cosm platform, which is a sort of artificial intelligence operating system behind the Wayfinder application, we wanted to find demonstrations of how artificial intelligence could improve real world industrial operations. And so we chose logistics and supply chain and warehouse uh, sort of industry at the heart of this, um, as a heart of the, the major sort of problems, which we all, of course, you know, ex experienced during COVID and to see if we could really use AI to help optimize. So we demonstrated that with our first major partner, which is uh, NRI, and we're able to demonstrate 30 plus percent productivity increases in those environments across multiple warehouses in both Canada and the United States. Then we started having conversations with large resellers. The goal, or the dream rather, was to get one of the biggest warehouse management systems to integrate our technology into their, what's called a WMS, so that, that then their customers could then begin to use that immediately. So this is kind of like taking your little magic pixie dust and going all the way up to where the water comes right out of the ground and then and then and put, sprinkling it in there so that everyone gets it downstream. So this is a, this is very significant because the nature of this uh, is essentially enables Blue Yonder to be a key reseller and they'll start to, uh, we'll do an integration that enables Wayfinder to become part of their warehouse management system. And then they will use that to essentially resell that capability as an enhancement of their platform, a feature that they don't have now with their current customers. Now, our understanding is that the tech category that Versus falls into is the spatial web. Could you break down what the spatial web is for us? Sure, I think there's, there's kind of a couple of categories and they're somewhat nested. So the idea behind the spatial web is this, this notion that instead of a, a web of pages, which is what the World Wide Web is today, we actually are moving into a web of spaces. And this, this of course, is the real world that we inhabit. You know, If you want to then start to apply things like artificial intelligence into this web of spaces where you've got internet of things, devices sensing the environment and connecting things, whether in our homes or in our working places, uh, large industrial environments, ports, retail environments, you know, everything's kind of becoming smart. And so in order to enable artificial intelligence to really optimize those environments and get the benefits of AI, you need the ability to have this sort of larger network of spaces. So we pioneered the term, um, we wrote a book about that called The Spatial Web, how, how humans, machines, and AI will connect to transform the world in the 21st century, and really versus entire technology stack is enabling these, these sort of spatial web environments that become the, the playgrounds, if you will, the operating environments for artificial intelligence. So I would say our spatial web is the next era of the web as it moves into the world around us. Artificial intelligence is like the new application that is a smarter application for anything. 
our platform Cosm is like an operating system for the development of those. And Wayfinder is the first app that we developed in order to prove and demonstrate that. The Blue Yonder deal just really validates both the interest from the market leaders, the applicability to the global supply chain and, and its various customers. And I think huge uh, interest and scalability of then proving out uh, the power of artificial intelligence in these real world environments, a la the spatial web. How does the spatial web relate or compare to the metaverse? So the metaverse is, is, is an interesting term that um, you know, really emerged in the 90s as a fictional concept um, from a book that Neil Stevenson wrote. And if you think of uh, kind of virtual worlds in sci-fi that we've, we've heard about, there's everything from uh, the Matrix to uh, the holodeck in, in Star Trek to this notion of the metaverse which is sort of like an immersive virtual reality uh, world uh, that connects all of these various virtual reality environments together, similar to the, to the World Wide Web or the idea of a network of spaces as well. The difference is that originally the, the metaverse didn't really consider how virtual information would be represented in the physical world. It doesn't really think of a world of autonomous cars and drones and ships that are more robotic operating with information that's sort of spatially embedded, like drones being able to see flight lanes in the sky, but we might not be able to see those. So the metaverse is like the experiential interface for humans to the spatial web. And you could say the internet of things is like the machine interface to the spatial web, right? And so there's kind of, you know, we consider it a subset, a sort of a perspective, if you will, on, on, on the spatial web in general, but the needs extend far beyond most of the applications we hear about metaverse, which is still non-existent yet, you know, entertainment uh, is a huge focus. Education is a huge focus. It doesn't have very much to do with sort of operational uh, productivity or efficiency or what you might think of the benefits of, of automated activities in, in factories and, you know, the kind of experience that I think of all the time that is not a metaverse experience, but starts to feel like it is this idea of Amazon Go, where you you know, you know walk into any uh, store, in this case, it's an Amazon Go store, you grab whatever you want and you walk out. That's a fully automated experience. So instead of like an autonomous car, it's almost like an autonomous store, right? Or a smart store. Well, we want that capability to be everywhere, not just an Amazon-based stores. And that is part of the spatial web, but that's not really the metaverse. Now, when you enter that store, if you had augmented reality glasses on, maybe you're seeing holographic information about prices and specials and deals and, you know, intelligent routing for your shopping list through the, you know, through the, uh, through Whole Foods or whatever the, you know, wherever you might be shopping. That's kind of like an, a, meta, a metaverse layer, but you really see these things got to go together because that, sen that sensory system in the environment is going to be needed to recognize your face through a camera and log you into an account and access your banking information and check you out as you walk out. So kind of like the same thing that happens when you get in and out of an Uber, but for anywhere that you go, right? And that's, that's a, that, so you can see how the metaverse capabilities and the interface is very cool, but these other automated functions in the internet of things are actually really required to, to have this be functional at scale. So how do you see the spatial web evolving long-term? Like how far can this all go? <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's interesting. So I, I actually think what's happening is that first you had to digitize the documents. And there was a world where we just had books and magazines and periodicals and you know letters and uh, mail, and then we 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 digitized all that. So then we had email, we had you know blogs, and now we have you know a whole this whole network of of documents and then media, right? Video content, photo content, and then in an, in another way, you've got this other world that sort of evolved around games. So immersive experiences with lots of people simultaneously interacting. And that's grown to where you have hundreds of millions of players in some of these, um, some of these, uh, you know, sort of these game environments playing from all over the world at the same time. Fortnite is obviously really broken through as a, an interesting example. Um, simultaneously, you have these challenges around how do you scale society, civilization? How do you make things more efficient? Um, uh, the point of automation and robotics. So if you kind of think of that intersection, that's the space, that's the spatial web. My hope is that all of these various emerging technologies, which does feel a bit like buzzword salad, um, allows us to have a future that isn't, isn't like most of the stories we tell ourselves in these sci-fi narratives that end up in these sort of dystopic nightmares, but with really cool technology. 
but in an awful world that we don't want to live in. So what our goal is and the idea and dream of the spatial web is to have something that's much more like a white mirror world where we get the collective benefits of these emerging technologies. Um, and I think that that's, that's you know, it, how big can that get? You know, you know, some people are already talking about going interplanetary. Obviously we used to talk about moonshots as being big ideas. Now Elon wants to go to Mars. So maybe Mars shots are the new big ideas. So the spatial web, yes, could certainly be planet scale, but maybe it could go even bigger than that if we start to, to expand uh, you know, into the galaxy here. So um, sci-fi for sure. Uh, today we're starting with you know brick by brick, kind of building ourselves up and making sure we demonstrate real benefits and value in the marketplace. I think the Blue Yonder announcement is a great uh, signal to the market that uh, you know we're here to scale. Um, but how big can it get? God only knows. We saw that you recently opened a sensor fusion lab and research facility in Culver City, California. What can you tell us about the new lab? Well, probably first starting with the term sensor fusion, because you and most people probably have never heard this term. Um, so here's what sensor fusion is. You've got two eyes and you've got two ears and you've got skin and you're able to basically sense your environment and you're building a real world model of the room that you're in right now and the experience that you're having. And even though these various sensory systems use different sort of inputs and outputs to measure the environment, capture the information from the environment, you experience that as a single sort of moment, right? Your eyes are being merged so that you get a three-dimensional view because your brain is merging. It's fusing those sensors, a sort of sensor fusion. So when we talk about autonomous cars today, like take a Tesla, for example, if you've ever sat in a Tesla, you see there's a little screen and, and it's building a real world sort of 3D model from all the various cameras and sensors on the vehicle, of which they're actually far more than our, 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 our basic senses. And it's merging that into this little three-dimensional real-time scene. And it uses that to figure out how to operate in the world, slow down, speed up, uh, make sure it doesn't hit anything uh, as best as it can. Um, and so what a sensor fusion lab is, is trying to figure out how to take those same capabilities where you might have multiple cameras or temperature sensors or, or radar sensors or others aiming into an environment like a room, which could be a warehouse or a manufacturing plant or a retail environment, and being able to build that sort of real-time model of the world where then you can track things intelligently through the system, right? So not tracking things on spreadsheets or just in a database, but really being able to have a, 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 an array of various sensors, which can be made from different manufacturers, running on our COSM operating system that's fusing them all together into like a single understanding of the environment. This way then, if you need to figure out where certain inventory is or, or how low certain inventory is or how many people are clustered in a certain particular area of your retail environment, you need to send out a salesperson or a thousand other use cases, I really believe, and we certainly believe that these kinds of sensor fusion capabilities, which are central to our COSM uh, platform, are at the heart of that. So our lab is, is essentially an environment where we're beginning to test out these things and then be able to demonstrate them for clients as we move into 2023. Okay, so Gabe, what are the next things investors should look out for with Versus as we head into 2023? Well, uh, there's obviously the significant milestone that we're talking about today. Uh, they should certainly expect some more uh, other players similar like uh, to Blue Yonder in the market that uh, we expect to uh, become resellers as well, uh, uh, adding a, a much bigger uh, set of horsepower um, to distributing and reselling our, our products into the marketplace. Additionally, a really big announcement coming in December. Uh, as I mentioned, the spatial web is the sort of larger canvas here, but as a company, we're focused on what kinds of intelligent AI-based solutions can we uh, provide uh, in these environments and ultimately enable others to. And we have an announcement that's gonna be coming uh, around uh, Dr. Carl Friston, who is the, one of the leading neuroscientists in the world and one of the, the uh, most well-established artificial intelligence uh, researchers. Uh, he's joining the company as, as chief scientist. Uh, we'll be making that announcement uh, very shortly here. And we're releasing a landmark paper on the future of AI that we think is very disruptive as it points out uh, what we consider to be a lot of shortcomings to the current approaches by some of the largest companies in the world around artificial intelligence and says that the, the approach that we're taking based on Professor Friston's uh, you know, decades of research 
uh, an approach to artificial intelligence that's based on biological intelligence and how the brain actually works. And we think that being able to, to make this computable allows us to scale artificial intelligence in a completely new and revolutionary way. I hope that this is the shot heard around the world in the artificial intelligence space. And, uh, and then I think this is going to drive a lot of uh, awareness and, and, and uh, demand for versus, uh, versus capabilities and products as we, we move into 23. Awesome. Such an interesting story. And uh, thank you so much for coming on today and sharing it with us. Hey, thanks for having me, Cassandra. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for watching today. We'll be back again tomorrow with the latest in small cap news coverage. So be sure to stay tuned by hitting that notification bell and subscribing below before you leave us. Bye.